Greetings, this is Interstellar Radio. Today is February 23rd, 2020. Greetings, uh, Retro. What's going on? Greetings. Right. Um, yeah, hello. Whoa. Uh, today is something interesting. Uh, I'll get into that. Uh, I had a Etsy account set up, <clears throat> but it was not used there in a while and until recently. <laughs> so I had to deal with that. <laughs> what, what, what account? Etsy, uh, oh, really? reading, yeah, that I kind of almost got out of it because it wouldn't been used yeah. or hadn't been purchased on like ever until this month, mm-hmm. and I got to it. I got to it late, hmm. so yeah, <laughs> it's a bit of an interesting day. Um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> so yes, yeah, so we wanted to go into uh, a few different topics, right? Going on Yenin, Yenin first. Going on the theme of the Middle East. Yeah, Yemen and the connection to war, astral, or whatever you get, whatever you want to pick up on that. I actually feel like more than Yemen, it's kind of the energy there is one of the original places that was kind of created Hold on. it's kind of the creation of earth happened there in a way hmm. or it's one of the places that this started it's one of the most ancient energies of the earth yeah. of course it is it is created with our intention in the lower astral mm-hmm but it's like one of the central locations for the evolution of our young Earth getting into creation. So, hmm. so it's connection to lower astral. Yen in itself is not a very open area, it's an astral. It is almost very much 3D. It's kind of the testing site in a way to see how far, how dense it can go. That's why your weapons are there in Atlantis too. It's sort of the one of the areas of how low, how dense how uh, three-dimensional things can get. Think of it as tucked in the corner of the desert. On the... It is not the uh, it is not the most uh, hospitable land either. But it's te- tucked into the corner of the desert. And you're a place that's not the most active. Not the most uh, suited for civilizations. Hey, um. So, like all that violence and all that negativity, it's actually making the physical more physical. This is what I'm getting from that. It's um something like that. It was like, one of the. It is almost an anti-portal in a sense. That's what I'm feeling. The energy there is, is it more the it is part of the what made Earth Earth or this version of Earth into what it is. It's part of it. It is a almost an anti portal. Makes sense. Hmm. Yeah. Because that's yeah. I don't remember you see it like that, but it's all about balance too. Mm-hmm. It's like we don't really have many wars going anywhere else that we that we're aware of. Mm-hmm. So Yen then pulled a lot of that dense energy in into itself. Yeah, because you know the media blackout. Do you get anything from the media blackout? Need blackout is 
actually connected to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> yeah, stay out of our business. Yeah. yeah. But also, if you get too much attention to it, who looks like the bad guy? Mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia in America? Yeah, Saudi Arabia won't look too good, probably. If they, if people knew what happened in Yemen, if people heard about it and there was no media blackout, the mass, the consciousness would change it for sure. Yeah. Yeah, because. Uh, okay. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. They do not want this the energy there to change. They want to keep it. Yeah. Down and dense and, and slow. Yeah, cause Al, Al Jazeera talks about it. That's about it. Mm-hmm. There's probably others, but... but yes, yeah, so it's a, there to keep the balance. Uh, huh. Although not a balance that is always needed, mm. but it's part of the balance. Yeah. If there was peace there, if there was peace there, if there was uh, media exposure and a desire for peace there to happen, surely our collective consciousness would allow it to... to um, allowed to become lighter. It would be it would become lighter if they had more exposure. I want to say it's it's pulling in conflict, you know, from other places, you know, like the United States and all that kind of mm -hmm. pulling in that negativity. That's yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Hmm. But it's also allowing us to be connected to our denser reality. It is hmm. one of the anchors to the third dimension, or to the lower astral. But mostly to our third dimension. Hmm. I mean, do you feel like a Anunnaki energy there? In uh, some some area, some areas around it, but not mm -hmm. uh, there. It's it's a uh, spotty. Okay. There's Atlantean connections there. So. Okay. I believe there are some weapons underneath uh, Yemen somewhere. Atlantean. Okay. Atlantean weapons, yeah, it makes sense. Like crystals or the kind of um... more like a, a cannon to me, like a, hmm. like a space cannon energy. Jeez. Is that a black helicopter right here? That's a plane. That's a regular. Oh, okay. Might as well be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's like by an airport. I'm nowhere near one. Huh. That's funny. <laughs> um, what about, again, the energy of like Atlantean nuclear weapons? You like the like atomic bomb type of stuff? Yeah. Um, Maybe it was most like of those have been removed over time, actually. Yeah. It was like it was made there or something like that, or I don't know. Atomic bombs and yeah, they were stored there. Yeah. I actually feel funny enough. I feel when I was told that I, um, that most of the weapons are removed, I felt neutron energy. Like you'd know something about that. <laughs> That's different. <laughs> yeah. That, that came out of nowhere. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, your L3 might have something to know about, about knowing about that, but I, I'm not giving much access to uh, information about yeah. that particular. Protected. Yeah. Yeah. Well, through L3's energy, I feel like human design was done there at one time. Well, of course, it, part of the energy there, part of the energy of the Earth is just, in general, in Yemen yeah. area. Yeah, it was like, it was designed, a lot of the designs were there, and then it was all covered up. So, one way mm. to cover up is war. You know, perfect way of covering things up. Yeah. Make it hostile, make it not friendly. I guess that was one of the main areas where, yeah, human humans were developed. 
exactly. That like that. that area is so asleep now because of the, the dense density yeah. in the war. It is very sleepy, actually speaking. Yeah. Um. In a way, it's meant to be like this, like a, like an anti portal. Uh, because it allowed our it allowed our extension. It allowed our a challenge. Earth is not made to be a kindergarten. So it meant yes. to be a more challenging location. And yeah, the creation of this young and low relational energy is part of that challenge. It's it's an anchor. It's a uh, it sets the intention for part of that challenge. Yes, in a way, it is an anti portal. Yeah, I feel like you know, like energies from the universe go through there to kind of keep us on track, keep us in the direction that we're going in. I don't know what I thought. There are okay. different parts of it. Uh, again, not all the energy that I'm describing. Yeah. So, Yenin's a large part of it, but there's different places too. Um, yeah. It's a balance. So Yenin is the negative side of the balance. There are positive places that keep us on track, but just as there are negative places that keep us mm -hmm. um, a reason to go on track. Okay. Um, oh, whatever else you had to connect with on that. Or go to the next topic if you want. I'll see if there's one more thing to consider. All I feel in the end right now is a lot of death and transformation. That's going to be eventually. Eventually, Yenin will change, but it's. This process of war that creates the change. It's uh, eventually there will be no option but to release the anchors from the third dimension. Mm -hmm. And Yenin is one of those anchors. Um, yeah. So I, I see a lot of death there, but that death is, it has a purpose. Yeah. That death will, that will, in a way, the people who are attached to Yemen, they 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 die in the war. They die because of this dense energy there, and so they're so connected to this land and the energy there. That they're connected to Yemen, so that in astral, then they do their own connection. It sends an energy back to Yemen that can uplift it. You know, it's it's a very heavy and sleepy energy, but it's still going to be active. Mm. But it's a lot of the, the people in the souls connected to Yemen that are going to do that. Yeah. And that's part of the purpose or the, of the death that is going on now. They, people have agreed to these deaths to die, to be shot, to be killed in war. This war is agreed on. Mm -hmm. It's part mm. of the purpose. It's a release. So it's releasing some of that negative uh, energy. It's releasing some of the, the anchors. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's just the the part of a blackout. It's make it as slow as they can possibly make it. Make it to make the control. Stick around. They don't yeah. want to let this stuff go. But. In some ways, that's a good thing because it. I feel like it is releasing negativity too. Yes, it is. Yeah. But that's the reason why you have a blackout. It's just so that it takes as long as it can instead of yeah. you know, the more attention it has, the more conscious state it takes up with the collective. The, mm -hmm. 
easier it would be to resolve and bring it up to par. Hmm. Yeah, and then it's kind of the, the wound, so to speak. Yeah. All right. Uh, so speaking of the connection to Yemen, we should take a look at Saudi Arabia next, right? Yeah, Womanati connections. We don't have to spend too much time on it, but she I should say Saudi Arabia used to be a fairly ancient state sport, or there was mm -hmm. one there. Mm -hmm. It's kind of it's still there in some senses, but it's it's buried under the sand. Mm -hmm. Um I'm seeing like a, a crystalline structure. Um, but it's currently shut down and buried underneath the fairly remote area that's in the sand that's uh here, I'll see if I can the sheet. Yeah, makes sense. Um, yes. Um, But it's also, in a way, its own extension from Yannin's energy. Um, I'm seeing, it looks like branches or tendrils on the center of creation that exist in Yannin. Um, traveling up the, looks like the western side of Saudi Arabia, going north into Turkey, that region. So. So <clears throat> again, uh, there is a lot of the a lot of connection to the reptilians, and actually, I see the house of South itself is connected to the same uh, entity that the Queen of England is. Oh. They're almost the same entity. It, 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 the, 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 the royal family of Saudi Arabia and England are almost the same thing in, in a sense, in, in some ways. It's like they're different versions of each other. You know, the queen exists not only in England, but she has an alternate uh, form that's taking place in Saudi Arabia. It's that same energy, same connection. Deeply entwined. That's why you see, just as you know, uh, England and Britain used to have their their colonial empires and their expansionist eras. You see a lot of these uh, fundings and extension of extremist religious groups within Saudi Arabia to send out to their northern neighbors in the proxy conflict. Uh, a lot of the extreme versions of Islam had been uh, almost secretly uh, approved by the Saudi government. It promotes this very stringent view, it's stringent controlled religion. It's all about control and empire. So Saudi Arabia uses their religion to get to control, to get their empire, to get their influence over the world. And they're quite un unapologetic about it, as you see. That's on purpose. It's... Yeah, they use fear. Yes. Just as people fear the redcoats, you know, you, you have to fear. Now you're supposed to fear the uh, religious extremists. Yeah, because they have a lot to hide, that's why. Yeah. They have a lot to hide. Um, yeah, it feels like they know more than what they let on, obviously, right? Yes. Yes, there is a giant uh, crystalline 
structure underneath Saudi Arabia. Like a diamond structure, it looks like to me. Um, it's an ancient uh, technology. It dealt with a space. Uh, it was used by the aliens. It used to be an alien settlement in the region. I also feel the money system was developed there somewhere. Money system has more roots within uh, Mesopotamia, is what I'm feeling. Mm. Um, in Iraq, uh, but yes, it does have some presence there as well. Uh, but yes, the, Iraq, the Mesopotamia was sort of the, the playgrounds back then. Yeah. That's where uh, you had the miners, the gold, that the, yeah. the genetically altered mining uh, miners. Uh, yes. So they could gather their gold, supposedly. Yeah. So. so you're right. Saudi so Arabia gets hit a lot of wealth or something like that. It's yes. Place, place to hide it, something like that. Yes. I would say that that is most likely true. Um, because what I feel is like a giant spaceship underneath Saudi Arabia. Uh, it's kind of a crystalline spaceship. Yeah. Um, it's huge. So. Hmm. Um. One moment. Okay. Well, we can always go to the next. Yes, yeah, so that's probably. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. And the next topic would be uh, Jesus and Catholicism. So. Yeah. I see them kind of manipulating a matrix that was created by the angels. There was a. He spoke before about a matrix that was. That was uh, built between the Archons and the Angels, correct? Yeah. So yes, this Catholic Church is a way of hijacking the mat that matrix. So there's angelic energy in the Catholic Church, of course, but yet at the same time, it's not uh, used in a little tier way. There are alternate versions of the Catholic Church. Um, some have gone worse and some have gone better. I, from what I feel, ours is slightly worse, uh, but still in the middle. Um, but there's some versions that have gone completely dark. The Catholic Church could have become a lot lighter and more useful to humanity. It could have become a liberating force or an enlightening force. But the head went dark, of course. It went to our. It's connected to our financial system. It's connected to our. It's connected to all our systems of control. Deeply connected to our culture, even in our secular cultures. It's deeply influencing that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, connected to our it's, archons. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's a, it kind of hijacked the archon grid, in a, in a sense. Mm. It was not invented by all the archons, per se. Mm. Or, mm -hmm. But it, it's a, a condemnation effort. It, it's It's... It's an organic entity, so what I see. It just went dark. I do not see it uh, being... I do not see it, see it going away all that soon, but I do not see... I don't see it changing and influencing 
um, it's influential Wayne that it's going to take a longer time. It will not likely change. It is more of a, a stopgap uh, measure until humans learn to evolve uh, and seeing the Catholic Church will disappear once humans take their own connection, their own power in connecting to God and the universe. It will lose its power then, but only then. And its, and its death will be very, very slow. It is like a, a large empire built on top of this Archon Angelic Grid. It is here until we decide not to let it be here. So the Jesus energy was, I don't know, hijacked or would you word that? Yes, uh, it, it is hijacked, of course. But... Again, at different layers of the hijacking, either, other versions of Catholicism, Catholicism do not even involve Jesus. There are different versions of Catholicism in, in other worlds. Uh, yeah. Jesus is somewhat unique to this one. Hmm, yeah, because they have the apostles and the. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. The Jesus energy was. It had a more humble origin, but it opened up a portal that kind of allowed this to take place. It kind of opened up a timeline where this could take place. I guess they. So I mean, it, had they... Own, it had a more humble origin. Yeah, they felt like they had to take o take over Jesus's energies. <laughs> of course, it's always up to the person to figure yeah. it out. Yes, but they chose not to. Exactly. It's kind of like your mainstream media. You just listen to what we tell you. <laughs> It's not even yeah. mainstream media. You could also listen to Glenn Beck all the time and listen to what he tells you. Exactly. Yeah. It just it's yeah. It's just um. Yeah. Of course, when you go against all the belief systems, it's like a conspiracy theory and all that. So. Yeah. Exactly. Interesting. Yes, there are different versions of the Catholic Church, and some are more beneficial than others. But having it the way it is, where it becomes darker and more controlling, allows us to kind of move past it a bit easier. Mm -hmm. Think about it. If you're, if, it's kind of like moving out of your parents' house in a sense. Let's say you, let's say you turn 18 and your parents are. Yeah. Let's say they were assholes. It would be easy to, easier to move out and not think That's much true. about it. But if you were, had a good relationship, you may have reason to want to stay close to them. I have to put this out there. Does it feel like some people, it's like a spiritual laziness to, you know. It's fear. Live. Yeah, yeah. It's just an ingrained subconscious fear that needs to be worked out slowly and mm -hmm. with a, a bravery and discipline. Yeah. You know, because you have families that are, you know, yeah, just locked into those belief systems and you go mm -hmm. and you say, I don't want to be a part of that. It doesn't go very well. It is much like a conservative form of Mormonism. Mm -hmm. Which is, in a sense, a rogue, um, not offshoot, but it's, it's kind of inspired by the Catholic Church, the same energy. It tries to be the Catholic Church, but it's a lot more rogue and it's a lot less uh, balanced. So you do see much more radical uh, family dynamics with people who are deciding to be no longer Mormon. You see uh, disowning, you see drama when someone leads a church. 
um, that's just kind of the, uh, that, that, that's good that it, the uh, Mormon church, for example, is actually feeling itself under a kind of threat. So the control is within there. They do not want to appear weak, but they kind of, they're not as stable as the Catholic church. It's just a, a comparison to the Mormon to the Catholics. So. Yeah. I don't know, we can go Catholic, into that. The yeah, Catholics yeah. have been here for a while, so. Um, sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, if you want to go to the next topic. Sure. So, is there anything else you want to go into? You want to go to the International Space Station? Or, or should I just go to Gibraltar? Yeah. You want to try to straight to Gibraltar real quick? Yeah, or? yes, yeah. Do you have any questions or something you wanted to do? I don't know. Uh, so what do you see? Is it portal energy or what do you see? Alien energies or what do you see? Anything? Mothership or anything? Hmm. I see, um, I believe there's some mountains on both sides, correct? Mm hmm. It, it is a boundary, so it's, it's, uh, it, it kind of keeps information in. You know, back in the, back in the older days, the state of Gibraltar was the edge of the world. So you think the, there's places in this world that are used to so remove each other. And that's what the Strait of Gibraltar can do, is to move certain uh, influences or lessen them. So, it took time for the Spanish and the English and the French and everyone else to find the New World, to find Australia, to find the rest of Africa. So in a sense, it is a energetic boundary. Of course, of course, it's uh, that's kind of the grid there that separates the energy of the uh, the, the sea from the ocean. And that grid is at least a mountain that's like two. It's like a net kind of. It it just kind of keeps the energy in a, in a bubble. It kind of helped create that uh, Mediterranean bubble, that European bubble. There Eventually, that ex expanded, but it, that, that bubble was still there. So, yeah, your civilization was pretty much <clears throat> created there, or you know, history. Yeah, but but what I'm feeling now, the, the energy that the, the barrier used to try to keep things within the bubble, and now it's trying to keep the bubble somewhat contained. And uh, I think if you're in Morocco, you're you're um. Mm -hmm. North Africa, Italy, and Spain, those places are fairly quiet these days, right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's kind of keeping these things in a bubble. It's not as affected by the outside to the same extent as your America or England so it might be. Yeah, Spain used to be, though. One of the yeah. big powerhouses at one time. Yeah. In Portugal. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah, and, it's, uh, it's just kind of the... It, it's the mountains there and the, the street itself kind of... It, uh, it, it's a membrane. It kind of guides how the intonation energy there flows in or out. Mm-hmm. I also see it kind of like the lungs, in the sense, or like the the mouth of the the world, more so. Like the the, the it just kind of uh, has an effect on how energy circulates around the the world. Um. Yeah, there's a lot of gold energies there somewhere. 
Yeah, in Morocco. No. I feel like Atlantis has kind of settled in that area to cut to the gold as well. Mm -hmm. uh, or something in the, in the hills of Morocco. Mount That'd be okay. What's that? Oh, power, power crystals under the... Yeah, there's something there in Morocco. Um, or in the Zahara, the Ayat of Zahara, that kind of region. There's something there. Mm -hmm. It's also in Portugal as well. Um, Where the Mediterranean... See, too, there seems to be something underwater there. Yeah, there is something there. Definitely alien ships there or something. There's more There's more to it, but... I would look at uh, Portugal, because that's kind of like Morocco in a way. It's, uh, the energy kind of, has some similarities. Yeah, kind of... Yeah. Doesn't get any attention, basically. Yeah. But it's also it's a very ancient kind of still in stable energy there. Yeah, kind of out of the way right now. Yeah. yeah. So I would look at yeah Morocco and Portugal as places to uh, any interesting uh, ancient world or alien uh, energy to surface. Okay. Uh, should we move on to the next topic? Sure. International Space Station. I kind of see a potential for the space station itself to kind of come down. Or kind of come back to Earth, in a way. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of becoming outdated. It's kind of carrying outdated uh, modes of their ideas about science in the universe. It's uh, but it has the potential to come uh, shut down. It's uh, a bit too isolated. It's going to become obsolete. In the preparing for it to become obsolete, mm -hmm. I don't know if anything will replace the International Space Station, except the. The more travel within space itself, more potential uh, travels there. But uh, the station itself is kind of a stick in lead. It's becoming this decidual in a way. Or I feel it's becoming this decidual in a way. Oh, I felt, I'm not sure if it's, I felt the death there, like a yeah. like, murder or something like that. Covered up. <clears throat> um, I think I think it's until like an alien, I can say, like a small alien or maybe yeah. like a alien creature, like animal. Mm -hmm. But it feels small, and it was kind of covered up there, or. You know, it, it's inconvenient or disposed of. They kind of didn't know what to do with it and potentially got killed there. Hmm. But I'm seeing like some sort of green, small thing there. It's hard to. I don't know. It's, it feels like it's kind of like a soap opera energy over there, too. It's, yeah. It's, it's... But it's also becoming just obsolete, you know, it, it's kind of trying to identify itself. Or try, it, it wants to reinvent itself at the same time that it really doesn't have the energy to last in the long term. Um, especially to get more space travel. We won't nearly need as much of the presence around our near-Earth orbit as much. Or at least not a human presence. What about uh, SpaceX? They might build something out there. Uh, further out, maybe, yeah. Um, again, the, the space station, the International Space Station is still very connected to Earth and its energy. Mm -hmm. Too much so to be of much use to us in the future. Having some yeah. things way out there, you know, beyond the moon, that's you know, possibly inhabited by humans is what's going to 
bring us into the future, potentially, or it's going to help us come into the future. But we don't really know how it's going to happen quite yet. Mm. It's kind of, although there's no real plan set in stone that I can pick up on yet, uh, there's still very little use to the International Space Station at the moment. It, there's a sense that it's going to become obsolete. Especially as new technology comes out. I see uh, technology coming out that may make it easier for people to get into space. Uh, it won't be as uh, much of a momentous occasion for one rocket to launch off. You know, it'll be kind of like how some people watch planes, you know, take off from land, or they watch ships go out the harbor. Mm-hmm. It still can be exciting, but it's not as announced as a rocket launch. Uh, and so rocket launches will someday become a bit more mundane. Yeah. It's still interesting. Yeah. Eventually, yeah. Oh, wow yeah. for that. So yeah, they're, they're, pre- they're preparing for the space, the space station to come obsolete. So, <clears throat> but there's no plan set in stone yet for what will replace it. Just more of a feeling. Yeah, because the cost of it. And yeah. They do science up there, or whatever they're doing up there, experiments. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go to the next. So. Yes. Yeah, so Oh, yes. South Korea, yes. Um, I think that South, South Korea in itself is a kind of Singapore-like energy, or it's the same location. Um, mm. It's not quite as strong there. It's a financial system more than it is a technical um you see a lot of companies there, your, your Samsungs and your cheaper electronic companies made uh, there. But it, it not, it's more of a financial system. There. It's more of a financial uh, economy there, uh, financial uh, background. The Illuminati. Yeah, so it's like competing with Japan. Yes. Um, South Korea is not going to bring as much new information in, uh, and Japan has a stronger potential for that. Japan is much uh, more connected to the astral world, mm-hmm. where Korea is, um, again, it's much denser. Korea is kind of the old world? In it's a sense, old. yeah, it, it's, it's, it's just more of a financial. Um, mm-hmm. I see a lot of investment going on in Korea. Mm-hmm. See, they produce much more consumer goods, um, consumer electronics. That's their main uh, export, it seems. There's a lot of influence in consumer electronic goods that are... But they're not really pushing the envelope too far. Whereas uh, Japan, Japan has more of the ability to connect to you know, your, your astral world, your aliens, and potentially branch out into the future. The Korea is kind of um, it's advancing, but it's still a, kind of the chromogen energy there. It's it's made to look attractive, but not with much substance. If, um, because uh, Japan's connected to the United States, that might be helping that. Yes. A yes. lot. Yes. Um, one moment. And South Korea is just seen as competition, basically. Well, also think about, you know, that Japan has uh, access to uh, Astro. They can bring out a lot of weapons and destruction. Yeah. Plan. You know, they can become very powerful if they wanted to. They had before. Yeah. There's lots of ambition and energy in Japan. Uh, lots of Potential. It, it could be very explosive. 
Uh, so, of course, the U.S. and the Commission is kind of tamping down on that, actually. It's, so it's kind of like a woman I'd cover up, hang out. Um, North Korea? Japan. Japan, Japan seems like. Japan, um, Japan and it's kind of like China in, in a similar boat in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, but the influence in Japan kind of makes sure that Japan didn't go too far off the walls. Um, you know, it's kind of a, when the, the, the bombs are dropped, that was kind of like kind of telling Japan who's the more powerful or who's the more potent force. Sure. Of course, that's a you know, that's a shadow government, military, Illuminati kind of uh, thing to do. So, well, it was uh, also like, like the Quenza too, like kind of like rebuild it. Yeah. So. But Japan itself was sort of somewhat humiliated and made to be a bit more tempered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because it tried to take over the world, basically. Yes. Japan could do quite a lot of damage if they wanted to. It still could. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of the U.S. influence to try to keep things in a balance. Yeah, they're more focused on money. and. Well, not know. like South Korea. South Korea itself is a lot more... Um... Yeah. Oh. South Korea, it's, it's a lot... It's a lot it's, uh, Fortune and companies and you know it's all made to look you know high society, mm. um, but it, it has not as much substance it seems like compared to Japan. And I feel like Japan, a, yeah. Japan, Japan has a lot more of the actual and alien connection. It has a lot more substance in the, in a way. Yeah, Japan feels like it's it's innovation. Yeah, it's very innovative. Yes, it's, do, uh, yeah, they have. Robots there, um, um, you know, like the the developing ro uh, Of course, they're probably doing it in other places too, but they're definitely developing it there. I mean, publicly. Korea itself is innovating, but it's innovating in different ways. It's innovating in yeah, uh, copying. <laughs> but they're they're copying and they're making minor adjustments to things that yeah. already exist. Yeah. Again, it's it's more, it's aesthetic, but it's not so much substance. Yeah, they're just it feels like like when the iPhone was created, Samsung was just there to copy yeah. it. <laughs> it did. <laughs> just to be lazy about it. They didn't care. <laughs> right. Funny. But they are doing some inventions with the fold foldable phone and all that. Yeah, so Yeah. Anyway. But again, it, it's very small. It's very yeah. um Yeah. It's not as it's not as impactful. Yeah. It's it's very it's kept at a very deliberate pace to be slower, not to have as much impact. It's it's meant to be um in the background. Yeah. It's all part of the consumer brainwashing, uh, in a sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On alternative. It, it, yeah. What's that? An alternative to, you yeah. know, like Apple or something like that. Just yeah, it, 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 it's like how you know it's kind of like um in video gaming. The energy there is kind of like how some companies make the same game over and over and over, mm -hmm. but with mm -hmm. different aesthetics to it. Mm -hmm. They don't yep. they don't branch out. They don't make the new versions more entertaining so much. Yeah. Um. Korea does the same thing. They kind of they take your mobile, mobile phone designs and your car designs and all that, and they kind of make it to be, um, you know, it looks nice, but it doesn't really have that much substance. It's it's very empty. No, they don't feel like they have to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because they don't want to be too influential for some reason. They don't want to do it. Well, because it's it's, it's a your Illuminati area, you know, it's, yeah. it's your it's like your Singapore. More so than yeah. Japan is. The thing mm -hmm. can do whatever it wants. It's, it's you know, it's that's clear that the the mm -hmm. hot spot is your your astral hot spots in Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, your actual connection with Japan. Um, Korea, it, it kind of shut that down. Yeah. 
All right. Okay, we're gonna wrap it up. Anything else? Are we, is there anything else you want to go into that? Um. Moment. Only thing I can say, the Korea, they're, still, they're showing like a music. Is that uh, a lot of Korean music becomes much more popular? That it's kind of an entrancing, uh, like your, your K-pop is meant to kind of hypnotize and entrance. That's the purpose it serves. You know, it's your K-pop is um, again, it's, it's very aesthetic. That is there always substance there? Not really. Mm -hmm. Or if it is, you know, it's not something that's easy to access. Uh, again, it's only with certain um, musicians there. And <clears throat> there's some that are breaking that mold, of course. There are some that are kind of more genuine in their, their music production. But that's kind of there to, to balance it out. It, it's just like anything, you know, you got to trust your gut and how your music makes you feel. Is it enchanting you or is it doing something out that's you know, more honest. Um, but yeah, that's about it. All right. Um, CFO, uh, is there anything for, uh, sure. anything for you? Um, yeah. Well, I see it like a Zeta army. I see that you're in charge of it. Not an army, like going to attack people, but Something like an army, though. Um, like, a, like a collective. Um, basically, protect the human race as it be as it's being developed. And some of them were kind of gang-like, attacking other alien beings that were getting, that were interfering with the humans being developed. Mm. Some just went crazy. That's not what you're looking for, but some did. Uh, of course, where humans, the development of humans kind of like, based on our world, is kind of kept like secret. I mean, everyone has their own version of it, but I think the main connection is kind of hidden from even alien species for. Hmm. Certain reasons. Some aliens are their whole mission is to figure out where we came from. <laughs> or what put us together. They spend their whole lifetimes trying to figure it out. We might get somewhere with it, but so Yeah. Also Yeah, a lot of alien archaeology. I mean a lot of alien technologies have been hidden here too. Of course, yeah. I think you're part of that. Also, I think you found some too you weren't expecting to find. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, just some stuff was hidden here for different reasons. They're not going yeah. into why. So. I did, when you did say that, when you, when you started speaking about the, the Zeta army, I did feel like there was some sort of um, violence, though. Um, no. Perhaps, I don't want to say civil, civil war. That's the closest thing I can think of. Hmm. Uh, but I do see, I do see myself mobilizing them. Um, in the sense, uh, yeah, I see them being mobilized or something. That that's that, that was a pretty graphic, uh, strong image impression. Here I'll add this. I had a weird dream last night. There's a couple parts to it that I remember, but one was a lady was pregnant. You no, know, she had the stomach. But then she like removed her shirt or something, and, the, and then there was a kid, like standing there, <laughs> like eight years old. <laughs> it's like that was freaking weird. I don't know what that was about, <laughs> but that was weird. <laughs> the kid was eight years old, you said. Something like that. It was at that age, you know, not fully grown, but a kid. Yeah, just standing there. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> 
or some it, weird. You know, eight, year, eight years old is sort of the a threshold where you know the children as they're growing eight years old is, is kind of a threshold for development, their emotional yeah. development. So what I gather from that is there may be someone who's you know they're still young and figure things out, but they have uh they kind of already gone through a large part of their process of you know figuring things out mm -hmm. um at least on some emotional level uh and, and now they're kind of not they're, you know they're still not they're not experienced but they're, they're still more capable of going toe to toe with difficulties mm -hmm. um weird yeah because your, your critical period is uh up until you're like seven yeah so anyway, I'll figure I'll share that. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting, but I feel like there's some sort of deeper meaning to it, yeah. Yeah. Like if I meet that woman, um if I may know her already. Maybe. Even if it's not a yeah. Okay. Um Okay. But their her child, their potential child may just be a bit more mature. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Or faster to develop, I'd say. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Close her out. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. Yeah. Take care, right, everyone. Sure, everyone. Blessings.